next time. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to GC365. We're on day 61. And my name is Sarah. I'm the little kids pastor here at the Mill Creek campus. And I am joined by my good friend. Hi, I'm Jessie. Um, so I serve in Little Kids with Sarah. And we started coming here because our kids went to school together mm-hmm. and Issa gave David an invitation to one of the events. Mm-hmm. So we came and he had so much fun and we were looking for a church at that time. So it just worked out. And I then, yeah, and I then met. Joined our women's group. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then it became more than just, hey, you're my kid's friend's mom. Hi. <laughs> and we got to know each other. And then we were around each other all the time. Yep. Because uh, we were at the kids were at school together. Yeah. We were at the church together. Yep. Uh, we were in group together. And then David joined ballet. Yep. And then so, we saw each other at ballet and we still didn't time. get sick of each other, yeah. which is great. <laughs> yes. So it's, we're going to go into um, our reading today. We start in Leviticus. Um, so we've been looking at the ways to um, get mm-hmm. out of if you were in poverty or enslaved. And it kind of feels like God's setting the standard here of the right way, mm-hmm. the moral standard of how to handle this. Uh, He says in verse 55, for the people of Israel belong to me. They are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. So what did you get out of Leviticus? Yeah. So that was actually, I think my favorite verse, um, because I just feel like he is talking about if you are enslaved or if you are, you know, hit poverty and you go and sell yourself into slavery, how he is always going to give you a way out. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how, you know, you will be able to redeem yourself or buy yourself freedom during the year of Jubilee. And I just think that that is so true with God and how Mm -hmm. he no matter what the circumstances, he's always going to give us a way out. Right. And that verse when he's talking about how you belong to me, just, you know, he, we belong to him and right. he is always going to give us a way back to him. Yeah. I love that too. Yeah. And we didn't live back then, but you know, even now like addiction or whatever it is that you feel mm-hmm. enslaved to, like God's always going to find a way out. Um, yeah. And I love that we can get that from this passage today. Uh, Then we go into blessings for being obedient. Mm -hmm. And um, he says, if you follow my decrees or careful to follow my commands, I will send you rain, crops, plenty to eat. You'll have peace in your land. I will fight your enemies for you. Um, Mm -hmm. And I read this and I think about my children. We're both parents. Yep. And how much you want to give to your children. I mean, they don't even have to ask, you know, I want to bless them. So Mm -hmm. I love this and that you know, God wants to bless us too. And then we go into the punishments for disobedience. (laughs) And if you do not disobey, he will bring sudden terrors upon you, wasting disease, burning fevers. I will not protect you. I will inflict disaster. And it goes on even to say that God will punish them seven times over for their sins. And you will eat the flesh of your own sons and daughters. Yeah. I mean, you get the feeling here you don't want to mess with God. Yes. <laughs> and my children, I laugh a little bit as I read this because I think about my children and I have a 13 and a 10 year old who like to push the limits. And I just it sounds like how it goes in my house. Like if you do this, you're going to lose video games for the day. And then it goes from that to like you're going to lose it for a month. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. You're going to lose it for a whole year. Like yes. you just get more and more upset. And so you just get that feeling, you know, God is like hey, if you don't follow, the punishments get worse and worse. And I don't know that I would push God <laughs> yeah, and try and test it. Like I may give in with my children, but I'm pretty sure God's serious here. Yes. So what did you get from this passage? Yeah, I think it's like, you know, parenting is such a perfect example. And I just feel like, you know, God is telling us not to do this for a reason. And we just keep pushing. And it's kind of like when you tell your kids like, okay, don't do this. And you're watching them as they do it. (laughs) And it's so frustrating. And it's just so easy to understand God because I'm the same way. I'm like, don't do this. And then they do it and I blow up right on them. So and he has even more of us. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like that. most of us have two kids. Like right. I can't even imagine God having to deal with all of us, like right. all the time. Being a parent, I think he made us parents so we could relate and understand like yes. how all of that, you know, like how that feels for him. He loves us. So yeah. Then we go into Mark 
And talking about punishment, we kind of get into Jesus again, telling the disciples that he's Mm going to take on like the ultimate punishment for Mm -hmm. all of us and for our sins. And he tells them again, I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be beaten. I'm going Mm -hmm. to die. And after he says this, we see James and John come to him with a request. And we've talked about this before, but they ask to sit on his right and on his left. And it's kind of hard for me to imagine. Like, I know they loved him. They followed him. They were faithful and loyal. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to imagine in that moment to be like, hey, like before you die, (laughs) can we talk about us being on your right and left? Um, Obviously, Jesus responds, you know, you don't know what you're asking. Um, And then he goes on, you know, to kind of set that tone and the expectation for all of us. And that's to he came to serve us. He didn't come for himself. And so Mm -hmm you are supposed to serve others. So he goes on to say, um, you know, the rulers in this world lord it over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be a servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave to everyone else. For even the son of God came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. That is so hard I mean, I'll be honest, like it's so easy to try and see what you're going to get from something many times. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously Jesus didn't do that at all. And so I love this passage and that reminder of just serving others um, and that that's the tone Jesus set. You know, that was the standard and that's the example that he set. So what did you get from? Yeah, I mean, I think we see Jesus serving throughout the Bible all the time. Um, I think when I read this, though, when the blind man, you know, is calling out to Jesus and he gets told to be quiet and he just yells even Mm -hmm. louder, that just like that passion and that want and Mm -hmm. that desire that he shows for Jesus, um, I just think is so beautiful because I think that, you know, that faith to know that if you keep calling out to him, Yes. that he will come through for you, you yeah. know, and we see Jesus serving him and we see Jesus giving him his sight back. And I just think it's so amazing to have that reassurance that Jesus will be there for us. Yeah. And the passion to just, yep. Like always want Jesus. And yeah. It says even that um, he followed him after that, like mm-hmm. even after he healed him. So he wasn't just like, Oh, Jesus healed me. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to go tell everyone, you know, I'm going to be on my way. Like he followed him. Um, And I love that. And I love, you know, just that passion to just want to be with Jesus. Yeah. Um, And I love to just the amount of compassion and mercy that Jesus showed here in healing him. And that's also another great example. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, just our Psalms, we just see that Mm -hmm. passion that David is painting about you know, loving the church. And he illustrates that for us. And, you know, that love he has for God and the yeah. church and that the relationship, the relationship that we have um, yeah. with like that Jesus has with the church and his love yes. for it. Um, and then Proverbs really um, wraps everything up really well today and mm-hmm. um, reminding us that God wants to bless us. So mm-hmm. the blessing of the Lord makes a person rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Like that's it. Like he yep. just wants to bless us. Um, yes. just like we want to bless our children. Yep. Um, so I love ending with that today and just that reminder that he wants to bless you, seek him, um, you know, have that passion and desire to ask. And he is where he's waiting like for us to come to him and ask. So thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank and you. And we hope you guys have a blessed day today. Thanks. Bye.